I'm back. The let's play is over. You can uh, leave if you want to, but uh, I figured I'd just show the. Uh, let's just see some of the credits real quick. Secret level. And that's enough of that. Now I forgot to show the uh, development diary. Now I just want to give a few more thoughts about the game after all this stuff. So enjoy. I'll be back. Major Jason Amory. My name is Eric. I'm a Special Forces Captain in the United States Army. I'm going to be discussing the role of the rifleman in the United States Army. A rifleman in the United States Army is really the cornerstone. Uh, he's an 11 Bravo. He's an infantryman, and they're usually the entry level position uh, for most infantry soldiers. He goes through basic training, he goes through advanced individual training. Small unit tactics, patrolling, um, and also encompasses some live fire operations on both individual and fire team levels. The rifleman is typically called the grunt because he is the one that often carries out some of the more difficult duties in a squad. When it comes to assaulting objectives, he'll be covered by an automatic rifleman, he'll be covered by a 203, and he'll often be the one who's being set forward to carry out a lot of more hazardous tasks. The rifleman's duties are very broad in scope. He's a member of a fire team, and a very important member of that team. He's responsible for uh, pulling security, uh, both during movement and whenever that team is static. And he really keys off the team leader. When you're playing the game, what you notice is that your job as a rifleman is to follow your team leader. Your squad is moving in a given direction and you're expected to follow with the squad and provide security. At times your team leader will give you specific orders to carry out, but your job at that point is to follow your team leader's example and listen to his orders to the letter. The game America's Army uh, really has achieved a real high, high level of accuracy in the role of the rifleman. Um, everything from the types of missions that he's assigned to, his proximity to the team leader during operations, and his place within the uh, movement formations as they conduct the, the different operations on the different levels, um, all the way to the sighting um, that's used. And I think that's one of the really wonderful things that has happened in this game is that we've made the weapons sighting um, as accurate as possible. So when you look over, uh, a scope of a weapon, or when you look over the iron sights of a weapon, it looks realistic um, to what an actual rifleman sees when he's on a combat operation. That's video one, and then here's video two. Uh, belt-fed 556 uh, weapon system. 
uh, that's capable of laying down heavy volume of suppressive fire. The small automatic weapon can be used both for suppression and for direct engagement of the enemy. It's high rate of fire, uh, and, and its terrific accuracy makes it really good for both breaking up enemy formation and for actually eliminating the enemy. In the game of America's Army, uh, the automatic rifleman's role is uh, used very appropriately for both the targeting systems um, all the way down to when you actually reload the weapon system. And um, when you go through the reload, it's kind of neat because you, you sweep across the, the breach of the weapon system to make sure that there's no brass stuck in it before taking off the, uh, the magazine and, and putting on a new, uh, new magazine and new belt of ammunition. The game uses the automatic rifleman in the same way that we use them in the infantry. The automatic rifleman has an incredible amount of firepower in the game. However, there are limitations to, to the accuracy depending on how you're employing the weapon. One thing in the game that may seem frustrating to players is that if you want to shoot it accurately, you need to get in front. And that's how the game really uh, reflects real life very well. This is an automatic rifleman. You really need to have a, a very steady firing position where you can use the weapon well. Alright, so, yeah, my first Let's Play back from a, you know, short break, and what a doozy. I contemplated quitting this Let's Play multiple times. I mean, so many times I was like, look, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I don't really even want to do it anymore. And a whole bunch of other stuff. <coughs> and wow. And uh like my thoughts on the game. The squad mechanics I don't know what to say about the squad mechanics. Is it the squad mechanics aren't really squad mechanics. They are, but they're not. I, I say that because you can order a squad to go somewhere or to go to a certain to a specific point. No, no. You can't order the squad to do anything or go anywhere unless the computer wants you to. So, I mean, like if I want the squad to go across the street, I'll tell them to go across the street. They won't do it. However, if there's a checkpoint there or like, you know, like the little yellow move points, if there's a yellow area there where the computer wants the squad to go, then they'll go. If I want the squad to, uh, like, after I breach a door, to go in, go in the, uh, go in the room, they won't do it. If the computer wants the squad to do it, <laughs> you know, then they'll do it. So that's what I mean. You know, like, they're they're squad commands, but they're not really squad commands. They're more like squad moments, because at certain points, your squad will do stuff. And those points are dictated and determined by, you know, the design of the game and by the computer. <coughs> so the squad elements are very weak, if you ask me. It's still fun, you know, because I, I played in a squad the whole entire game, basically. It's still fun to be in a squad and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, the first person shooting isn't all that great. It's okay when you're prone, but I, I, that's the thing. Like every time you want to take a shot, if you want to take it with some sort of accuracy or any kind of accuracy whatsoever and stability, you have to drop down to your belly, and that's a little uh, ridiculous for every shot, just about. And well, you know, it it, it, it is fun. You know, it, 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 this is a very realistic game so it's so it's a game where you know enemies die within a reasonable amount of shots or bullets or whatever you know some games you know like uh, some shooters first person shooters you know sci-fi or or whatever sometimes the enemy takes a long time or forever to bring down here at least the enemy drops with you know within a you know a realistic amount of time or with a realistic amount of damage so that's fine the modifications are weak. I say that because you only get to modify one gun, and then you only get to do that when you're more than halfway through the campaign, you know, or, or through the single player mode. 
because there's there's 35 missions each split into fives <coughs> I'll show you hmm yeah you don't even get a chance to modify uh, your gun until I think right here I believe it's either here or here I believe it's this one but anyway once you do finally get to modify your weapon you're more than halfway through the game to add even more insult to injury you only get to modify one weapon <coughs> and that's the assault rifle to add more insult to injury you can't modify it the way you want to because I tried to modify my assault rifle with the uh, the silencer and you know the four times magnification scope and with the uh, grenade launcher on the bottom the game said you can't do that I if you want to do that you have to take away the scope but I'm like isn't that the whole point of modding a weapon you know like to to add stuff onto a weapon that doesn't really belong on a weapon or you know to make the weapon you know to alter a weapon's design to add more stuff <coughs> or to add stuff that it wouldn't normally have on there but whatever you know it's the army and so they have their own little rules or whatever so modding is also weak the health system the health system's okay it's still kind of weak, but it's, you know it's it's okay because because like uh you get to uh you, it's like you have two health bars. You have an injury bar. You know you you can take injuries or whatever, like uh sort of major injuries where like the little icon, you know the little you know your icon when you're playing, it'll turn red or whatever. Those are like I guess major then minor injuries are the ones that are the ones where you can heal yourself you know you know you'll get injured and it'll tell you to heal yourself so that's okay and that's another problem you get health packs in the game but you can't use the health packs until the game tells you to use the health packs I'm like so what's the point of even having health packs you know that's you know, I I know because like you know the game doesn't want you to use them you know frivolously or or you know they don't want you to use them all at once or whatever, but come on, come on, that's just ridiculous. Another thing, the uh, <coughs> the AI, I saw on multiple occasions, and I'm sure you guys have seen it as well, where the AI, if an enemy goes down, like in my squad, you know, like wh wh wherever name I'm, I'm assigned Bravo or Alpha or whatever I'm, I'm sort of responsible for healing my guys which kind of sucks because I only have three so if it, it, you know if, if, if I you know get to a bad level or to, or to a bad spot in the level I'll use all three health packs on them and I'd have any health packs for myself <coughs> but anyway the AI on the other squad that I'm not controlling they revive each other and I'm like well they revive each other why can't my allies revive me? Furthermore, why am I the only one in my squad that has health packs? That's that's stupid, you know. And and, and you would think if anyone, you know, if I died, the computer would revive me because I'm the squad leader. But it doesn't work like that. If you die, game over, checkpoint, or restart the level. And that's to be because you know the game showing me that it's capable of actually reviving me because I'm, I'm I'm watching the computer revive itself. I'm like, okay, we'll just use that on me. But that's not how it works. That's not how it wants to do business. So that's weak. The game overall is I don't know. It's it's pretty good. It's one of those games where uh, there's no difficulty. And I told you guys before, and, and a few other games. Oh, uh, I believe Galleon. I think I told you guys that. And 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 uh, without warning, beware of games that have no difficulty because games that have no difficulty, you don't know what you're going to expect. You know, there's easy levels here, there's hard levels here. It's easy, it's hard. It's just too inconsistent with like game difficulty and and crap. Whereas a game with a difficulty, you can you, at least you know what you're in for. 
even though sometimes you put on easy and you may come across a particularly hard mission sometimes you may put on hard and you go through the game and you may find like a particularly easy mission or whatever watch out for that <laughs> but anyways I'm almost done rambling uh, my next let's play is going to be combat one combat task force 121 I'm going to try if I don't do that one or if I can't do that one because of whatever I'll move on to uh, Star Wars Republic Commando and I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to get the right mix of like generic games because I, I consider this generic you know it, it's, it's a generic shooter but it's still a pretty good shooter you know you know with, with, with its fair share of flaws but uh, I'm trying to do you know like you know like generic game and then like a well-known game and then like maybe like or maybe two generic games, two well-known games, or one generic game, two well-known games, whatever. So I want to do well-known games as well, like Republic Commando, uh, I don't know, uh, Rainbow Six, The Suffering, Soldier of Fortune. I have a list of stuff that I want to do. I want to try to do some well-known games and 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 also my fair share of uh, of generic games. But for now, it's, gonna, it's it's all Xbox, at least for the next two Let's Plays. So I'm going to try Combat Task Force 121. Hopefully it works out. If, if, it wor if it all works out, I'll do that. And I'll do Republic Commando. If Combat Task Force doesn't work out, I'll do Republic Commando. Then I'll move on to the PS2. Until next time, this is, is Inquisitor Eisen on Overlip signing out. I'm going to upload this video these videos right now it's 9 p.m. where I'm at and well, 8 57 p.m. and I'm in uh, it's also July or well, August 4th 2014 Tuesday night hopefully this will all be finished uploading by 12 midnight or maybe later a either way it, sh it should all be finished uploading before Wednesday, or at the very at the very latest, two or three o'clock Wednesday morning. So, Chris and Eisen on Overlip signing out. Thanks for watching. And oh yeah, I forgot to thank you guys for my ten thousand views. But thanks anyways. You know, thanks in advance or whatever, or, th or thanks after the fact. And I'm also at sixteen thousand views. So thank you for the for the views. And I'll see you guys later.